The next mechanism is called as power screw. The power screw is composed of two parts. One is the actual power screw and second is the PFI nut. You can see there are grooves in the center of this PFI nut. So this portion can be inserted in the PFI nut. When you rotate the screw, the nut can travel inside this power screw. Power screw converts rotational motion into a linear motion. Power screw can be attached to the motor from this end and this end remains free. This is the motor and you attach power screw like this. We take the battery box. If we attach the motor to the battery box and switch on the battery box, you can see that the whole power screw is rotating. The P5 is rotating as well. This is of no use. That is why we need to restrict the P5 nut so that it moves in a linear fashion. Let us see how to do it. What you can do is you can attach the motor to any surface. Over here, we have a piece called as PU 5x7 and we will be attaching the motor to this piece. As you can see, it is difficult to attach the motor directly to this surface. That is why we are going to use few other pieces to attach the motor to this surface. Now you can see that the motor is attached to the surface like this. So make use of proper connections to attach the motor to the surface. Now what we do is we attach the power screw in this section of the motor. Again if we turn, you can see that the screw is moving but after some time it again starts rotating and it does not move linearly. To prevent this kind of motion, we need to guide the P5 nut. So over here what we've done is we've attached one more uh, piece like this. This piece is called PU5 by 13 and we are just restricting the movement of P5 nut using this piece. So as you can observe, the P5 nut is now traveling in a straight line. Of course, you can use multiple pieces to guide this P5 nut and convert rotational motion into a linear motion. We saw the problem with power screw. It comes off easily when it is not supported. There are multiple ways to support the power screw. What we can do is, we can first remove the nut completely and then we can use a CH2 to support it. This is one way of supporting the power screw with a CH2 piece and it also makes sure that the power screw remains straight. The other thing that you can do is, you can use a CT2 or a CT3 piece like this at the end. But first, we have to insert a P5 nut. Now, once the P5 nut is inserted, you can again maintain linearity by attaching one more CH2 at the other end. So this will lock the power screw in place like this. 